Okay, let's move on. Uh, Dr. Cole, uh, next topic, uh, kind of interesting right here because uh, I know Midwest, Midwest Orthopedics at Rush, um, where you do your surgeries and treat your patients, uh, always into the emerging uh, technologies. And you guys are right now in the middle of a clinical trial site to offer uh, another solution to active patients with cartilage problems. Yeah, I know we've talked about it a bunch, but it's still the number one problem that we see certainly of the knee, the hip, and uh, even other joints like the elbow and the shoulder, uh, but less so where people lose the surface of their joint, even in small areas. And historically, we didn't really have good solutions for this, Steve. It would be one of those things where you sort of tell people to wait it out. And this is a very large uh, uh, aspiring area in biotechnology where companies around the world are uh, looking for new solutions. And and it offers a challenge because in the United States, um, rightly so, the FDA is responsible for safety and efficacy in sure. terms of outcomes. So uh, they go through clinical trials. So Russia is a very uh, uh, important place for clinical trials where we have studies that can, uh, where technologies can only be obtained uh, in an investigational way. And we're in the midst of several trials, um, uh, one of which is uh, this uh, Novacard 3D from a, a company called Asculop, which is a really interesting trial. Let's bring on the Senior Vice President of Biologics for Asculop. He is uh, Dr. Bob Spiro, joining us here from Center Valley, Pennsylvania. Thanks so much, uh, Dr. Spiro, for, for joining us uh, on this Saturday morning. Now, why is it important to treat damaged cartilage? Yeah, it's a pretty straightforward answer. Um, Dr. Cole's uh, uh, started to address that. It's just a tissue that, once it's damaged, will not heal on its own. And it'll just continue to degrade over time, lose its ability to protect the knee just during everyday activities such as walking, climbing stairs, and running. So you have to catch it catch it early to stop that degradation. Tell me, uh, what's your background? I know you have a really important role with this with this company. It's a uh, biotechnology company, and this is one of their major biologics initiatives. What y- y- What's your role um, and what's your background? Uh, yeah, I'm really an immunologist by training. I came out um, in the late, late 80s, um, started in academics, but then jumped into industry in the tissue engineering space, so learning how to trick the body to regenerate bone, soft tissue, and now, now cartilage. And my role really at Asculap is overseeing all of R&D as well as this biologics group and this, this pivotal phase three trial that we're running in the U.S. and Canada right now. So give just provide an overview of what this technology is because it is very unique uh, and it's something that we're hoping we can get in the hands of all patients who need it within the next, you know, say two to five years. Now that may seem like forever in the eyes of or ears of a listener, but these things take a really long time and you've been at it for some time, but just give us an overview of what the technology is. Yeah, I think first and foremost, it's that we use the patient's own cartilage cells. These are not stem cells, but they're mature cells that really know how to make new cartilage tissue and basically we're able to trick them in culture, get them to grow and multiply over a three-week period so that we have enough to repair that damage. They're placed on a sponge-like template, shipped back to the surgeon where they're implanted into the defect, and over time, cells grow and make uh, pristine new cartilage tissue filling that defect, sort of like filling a pothole in the road. Again, visiting with Dr. Bob Spiro. He is a from Asculop, a Senior Vice President of Biologics. And uh, Dr. Cole, I want to ask you and Dr. Spiro, how, how do these trials work? I mean, you know, how, how does how does somebody qualify for one and uh, get you through this? I mean, the FDA has to recognize that you guys are trying to do these, right? Yeah, it's a it's a it's actually a, a fascinating area. It's something that I've been involved with for almost my entire career, where. Um, we're, we take sort of what I would call orphan technology, stuff that isn't used every single day for critical problems that don't have good solutions. And the FDA, as I said, their responsibility is for safety and efficacy, but the onus is always on the sponsor of the company to, to come to market. And the reason products often cost so much is that the process is it can be 10, 15 years long before a new product comes to market. We haven't seen a new biologic product be introduced into our market since 1997, just wow. to give you a sense. That's how... That's how uh, stale uh, the, the, the solution set is. It doesn't mean we have bad things, but we have absolutely needed things for to, to improve. So these are studies that are very time-consuming. They have outside monitors. They have multiple sites, sometimes 30, 40 centers around the country that are usually randomized trials. So patients have to be able to uh, be willing to sort of subject themselves to a randomized study where they may get one treatment that's currently available and then this treatment that is not available, and they only have a, maybe a 30 to 50% chance 
uh, well, let's put it another way. They have a say, a, it, sometimes it's what we call a two to one randomization, whereas they may, to every two patients gets the experimental new stuff that they otherwise couldn't get, and every one patient doesn't, they get the standard stuff. So either half the time or up to two thirds of the time, they get it, <clears throat> excuse me, and then the other remaining time, they may get what's already available. So the studies are very complicated. Uh, patients often misunderstand what if they're a candidate, so we get a lot of patients who would never be a candidate for it. But for this specific study, it's a very, um, uh, it's a localized cartilage problem where the knee is otherwise intact. They don't have the meniscus removed. They're normally aligned. They have no ligaments torn and things like that. They And they can't have arthritis. They have to have localized areas of cartilage loss. And they have to be, Bob, you can help me, between a- ages of 18 and 60. What's our age group? 65, yes. 65. Right. 18 to 65, correct, right. Right. So um, those are patients who are eligible candidates, and um, it's a surgical trial. So these are patients who would otherwise qualify for surgery and who are willing to uh, potentially be randomized uh, where they may get this treatment, where they get an arthroscopy. We look in with a small camera. We take a small piece of cartilage. That cartilage is actually cultured in a laboratory into a three-dimensional piece of cartilage that comes back to the operating room, and we implant it. We just did one last That's week. That's cool. And it's a, it's a really... Uh, very uh, safe, um, um, and I will tell you, you know, we can't share outcomes, but they've been using it in Europe for how many years now? Right. Yeah, since about 2003, so you're treat, treating them upwards of 20,000 patients. In the yeah, so you think about it, right. Realm. So yeah. think about it, they have 20,000 patients in Europe, and we can't use it here until we go through a clinical trial. So they can't even use the data they have in Europe. It has to be a, a fresh start, new clinical trial where, you know, several hundred patients have to be enrolled. You can imagine how challenging that is. Is that why sometimes, Dr. Cole and Dr. Spiro, we hear like, you know, Kobe Bryant went to Germany to get a procedure done? That's yeah. Correct. Yep. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the challenge right. in the United States, it, um, it's so, it's in, in some areas, it's not regulated enough, arguably. And in other areas, it's, it's, yep. it's it, you know, we could, if you want to say overregulated, I don't want to get into the politics here. It's like talking politics at the dinner table. But, you know, it, <laughs> it, it has made it very difficult. Look, if we've only had one new technology delivered since 1997, and you know how much science we do on a daily basis, that's pretty profound. So we, oftentimes patients are, are, are left to leave the United States to get certain treatments. Now, they have to it's sort of buyer beware, and you have to be very careful about, you know, the, how they synthesize the information they get to make that decision. Uh, but that being said, uh, you know, it's, it has to be done very methodically, very responsibly. And, you know, Bob, if you had to guess, you know, let's assume the outcomes prove favorable and we get through it, how long will it take before we can actually get to market after this clinical trial that we're performing? Yeah, with everything the way it's going uh, right now with enrollment, probably around, uh, end of 2023, early 2024. God willing, I'll still be, uh, God willing, I'll still be in practice and you'll still be there, okay? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. All right. That's right. Well, Dr. Spiro, congratulations with what you're doing with uh, Asculap. We appreciate it, and um, we'll keep an eye on that clinical trial. Thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity, guys. Once again, it's called Novacart 3D Trial. Great stuff from Dr. Cole and Dr. Bob Spiro, Senior Vice President Biologics with Asculap. All right, we're going to take a break right now, come back with our Ask the Doctor segment. It's Saturday morning, Steve Cashel, Dr. Brian Cole. You're listening to Sports Medicine Weekly, only on 670 The Score.